Okay, uh, the observer. So the observer is a spiritual practice and uh, it's sometimes called self-inquiry. I would say it's a, um, I would call it the father of it, shall we say, Ramana Maharishi, is a spiritual teacher in India. And it's just about, it's kind of like meditation. You know, meditation, you, you quiet your thoughts to, to gain experience of the spiritual realm. And this is what this does as well. So what we're doing is, uh, and I, I just have to do it the same way, even though I do this, I've done this in this group, it feels like hundreds of times. But this is a mug, yeah? And a mug, and a mug is an object, okay? And uh, all the things that I'm going to do here are not intellectual. These are actually spiritually experienced exercises. They're not, the head isn't actually required, but a mug is an object. Also, the type of, I mean, for most people, unless you're a mug addict, uh, a mug is what I call a neutral or a meaningless object. It hasn't got a lot of attachments or emotions or trauma associated with it. Now, when one is observing the mug, uh, just use your, don't, don't think, but the experience is you, you are not the mug. The experience is, you know, there is observing of the mug, but, you know, no one is confused that they are this mug. Okay. Also, it's very important, just when, with this mug, to just get the experience of it. Like, there's absolute knowingness, I'm not, not going to your head, but there's a spiritual knowingness that the mug is not you. There's a detached witnessing, you know. And also, it's meaningless, meaning that there's no, like, doesn't bring up anything. It's just, you know, detached witnessing of an object. Now, also, Notice, and this is an object, I like to use the word object, but you can call it, you know, it's a limited thing. Even if the mug passes before you, it's very clear it's not you. Even if the mug wasn't there, it's, you know, it's still clear that the mug is not you. Even if I held, suddenly held this right in front of somebody's eyes, you know, you wouldn't get confused after a few days that actually I think I'm a mug. You know, it's like it's clear that the mug is an object. So. One of the lessons in A Course in Miracles, I think it's quite a, quite a miraculous lesson, it says, all my thoughts are meaningless. All my thoughts are meaningless. Very important, you know, because you know, the, the opposite of meaningless is all my thoughts are special. Or we could have some of my thoughts are meaningless and some of my thoughts are special. Anyway, I don't want to go too much into the head. Don't, don't look. So, now, this is a meaningless object. Now, with thoughts, one of the biggest addictions, I would say, maybe, it could possibly be the biggest addiction, is the addiction to thoughts, the, the addiction to thinking. You know, it's just like um, if you had these little objects, maybe clouds passing before. You know, little clouds, there's little white clouds and little grey clouds passing by. Actually, if, if one was witnessing clouds passing by in the sky, it'd be, it's quite boring and meaningless. And you don't, nobody usually gets confused that they're a cloud. They don't sort of say, I think I'm a cloud, I'm not sure if I'm a cloud. But thoughts, thoughts are passing by. Now again, not asking to go to your head to think about this, but just like with the mug, is there a witnesser, is there a detached witnessing of thoughts? Or is there an observing of thoughts, which is not the thoughts? Just like there's clarity that a mug, when there's witnessing of a mug, is there a witnesser is, experientially? Don't go to your head. Is there witnessing of thoughts in this moment? So are you, that's a spiritual experience because now if, there, if you experience the witnesser, the attached witnesser or the observer of thoughts, essentially what happens is they start to dissolve immediately and there's a, there's a space. As soon as something is, is witnessed with uh, detachment or without meaning, then this, uh, this um, space starts to increase. We could call it a non-dual field, or the witnesser. However, it doesn't really matter. But uh, it's like there's no, you know, nothing is gripping on or attaching or giving meaning to the entertainment of what used to be the entertaining thoughts passing by. So, right, now, if there either is, there's the experience. Oh, yeah, the thoughts are not me. There's witnessing the thoughts. And in that, just like with the mug, there's absolute clarity, uh, spiritually, that I am not my thoughts, you know, because there's something here deeper that is more you than hooking into the next thought. 
Now, if anyone is experiencing problems, if there's now de if there's detached witnessing, if there's witnessing of thoughts, they still may be um, registered, is the right word. They still may be identified. That means that there is still some meaning or some significance given to the field of thoughts, like something still interested. Now, sometimes what happens is, um, if you're feeling quite serene, is that actually they just disappear and there's just witnessing. Now, or what can happen is there's just meaningless, you know, there's clear detached observation and then suddenly it seems a thought pops along that's meaningful or a special thought, you know, everything, it can let everything go. And then suddenly a thought comes as a special, like, you know, you know, it could be like, I forgot to wash my hands or something like that, you know. And then it's like, all these thoughts were meaningless. And now suddenly the thought, suddenly something wants to hook into the field, like the TV of thoughts, and wants to get into the drama. Now there's energy going into the thoughts, where all the thoughts are meaningless, they're kind of boring, and there's spacious detachment. Suddenly something wants to latch on and hook in to this meaningful... Once you hook into the first thought, the first special thought, because you're not going to hook into the, the cloud is, is white. You're not gonna, no one's going to hook into that, because those thoughts more or less disappear as they arise, because they're just too uninteresting to even register or be interested in. But usually when you get a special thought, suddenly you're bang into your thinking. So I'm just describing, you, know, you could say there's, di there's different types of people who are addicted to thoughts in different ways, and different levels of spiritual detachment from the field of thought. So that can happen, but then again, remember, just unhook from that thought and the rest of the thoughts. For me, it's like a, you know, like when you're in a, um, in a cinema, you know, when you first go in, there's absolute detachment from the screen. And, you know, you're not, you're not, there's, you know, if someone was to say, are you the screen? You, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like fight with them. They're obviously, I'm, there's an observing of the screen. The screen is not me. As soon as you put the mo as soon as you hook into the movie and give it meaning and make it special, you go into hypnosis. Suddenly it's like you're in the movie and the movie is real and there's no detachment. But it's just it's just actually an illusion. It's a drama that's going on out there. It's not really real. Though you know, these fluctuating pictures and things do not touch the truth of what you are. But if you hook into them, if you identify, if you project project meaning or specialness onto them, suddenly you become a zombie, you know, whatever's happening on the, on the movie screen, you feel it's you, it's real. So again, you know, again with thinking and thoughts passing by, again, you know, it's like uh, if, I was a Zen, if I was a Zen teacher, I'd whack you on the head with a cane if I thought you were hooking into thought, because don't mm -hmm. hook into thoughts, you know, because they're just detached witnessing. And, and the Zen master would whack you with a cane if he thought you were now going into the thoughts and trying to think. You see, that's, that's the wrong thing. So it's always like there's detached witnessing. Now, so basically when you're in the detached witnesser of meaningful thoughts, they become very sort of light and, and it's almost like, you know, you can still utilize them, but they're, they're kind of meaninglessly, uninterestingly passing by and usable. Now, what's the next thing is, if you're aware of that, then you can go to what is there a detached is there an observer of that observer, or is there an observer here that's not interested in thought? So we're taking it to a more advanced level now. Is there a witnessing here which is absolutely not interested in anything that's going on in thoughts? So if there is, now if you're able to do that, then you'll get to what I call thoughtless witnessing. Because an aspect of consciousness is that the only things that are registered are meaningful or special. Anything uh, for any person, shall we say, I shouldn't use the word person, but anyway, there you go. The person only registers things which are meaningful or special. This, ha this everyone knows. Uh, I think nearly everyone knows. It's like if you want to buy a red Ferrari, then you'll just notice all the red Ferraris everywhere you go. Or, you know, like a guy might not notice Michael Kors handbags. You know, like if you ask an average guy on the street, like how many Michael Kors handbags did you see? They'll go, I didn't see any today. You know, maybe if you ask a certain woman, 
I shouldn't have said that, isn't it? That's probably the wrong thing to say on camera. <laughs> anyway, I'll probably get some some YouTube comments anyway. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, Michael Kors, some people are interested in Michael Kors handbags and some people aren't, and so they register them. You'll notice this in your own consciousness. You only register in the day the things that were meaningful to you, but all the things that are unmeaningful to you don't register. The same thing goes with thought. So that power of consciousness, I mean, you only experience what is meaningful, and you don't experience what is not is meaningless. So how do you become free? How do you become more and more free? And I'm talking a bit. I'm not doing the... Because we've got a newcomer in here, I'm doing it in a slightly different way. But uh, I agree with the Course in Miracles. All my thoughts are meaningless. Meaning that if... You know, the thing that wants to give meaning to thoughts is the individual self, the ego self. You know, it's the limited self that's interested in hooking into the next thought. So if one has the faith to not give the energy, you know, every thought is meaningless. I don't have to, basically, don't bother hooking in. It's like a TV set's on, don't bother hooking into any of it. You know, and the ego will argue, well, maybe there's going to be a special thought, the next thought's going to be special, so I should just keep watching in case a special thought comes along. I don't want to miss that. Forget that, you, should, you know, just sort of like, forget even the next thought being special. Don't give it energy. Like, it'd be like the discipline of going into a movie, cinema, and not allowing yourself to go, to get absorbed into the hypnosis of the movie. Just stay detached and know that the movie is an illusion. You know, you don't have to buy in, like if it's a horror movie or a werewolf movie, you don't have to like buy in and start screaming. Just stay, you know, it's actually a film. It's not real. So, there's thoughts. The next thing, one of my other favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles is I'm not a body. I am free, for I am as God created me. If anyone does the Course, they'll, that's repeated over and over again. I think the Course does that because it knows that it's like the addiction, the addiction to identifying, to hooking into the body is one of the biggest things that humans have. That creates, well, thoughts, hook, hooking, you know, the addiction to thoughts and the addiction to the body. And this creates what I'd call separation. It, it creates the experience of so if, if there's some kind of glue, identification or meaning given to the body and to thoughts, then it sort of contracts you into feeling like you're in a state of separation from others. There's now a me, we call this non-duality, there's a me relating to others. So as soon as you let go of the hooks of a me, like body and thoughts. Now how do you do the body? Remember the, the, the mug? So actually... The thoughts are little mugs, but they're actually observed, so forget those. The body is actually an object. You know, there's an awareness of the... It, unless you're an advanced spiritual seeker, there will be some awareness that, oh, this, I, I have a body. I can sense the body sitting. I can feel the body on the, on the pillow, on the chair. Oh, I have a sense that the body's this tall and this big. So that's, that's the mug. That's the coffee mug. Yeah, because anything that's limited, anything that is an object, there is an observer of it in consciousness. To because anything that's limited, there has to be something that watches that limitation. Yeah, I don't know. So again, this is not head stuff. You can go to your head. So if the body is an object, what's witnessing or observing the body? Again, spiritual experience, not mental thinking. So is there an, a, a sense of the body? Is there awareness of the body? And then, actually, that's a mug. What's witnessing? Is that which is... Now, this is, I'm asking experientially. Is the witnesser of the body... Uh, is the witnesser of the body a body? Just like, is the witnesser of thoughts a thought? So through your own experience, you'll get this. And you see, is there another body observing the body? Or is it just, is it just spacious, empty space that's observing the body? which is not limited by the body. So that's the next one. So you have the thoughts. I'll wrap it up very quickly. But the next thing is time. Lots of people, especially in the Western world, are tracking time. You know, there's something in their, in their consciousness which is counting seconds. You know, somehow time has become very meaningful and there's like a mechanism that's somehow unconsciously one second's gone by. But is there something in here now which witnesses time? i.e. something that's not interested in time. 
that watches but it doesn't want to hook in or track. I call it tracking time. Is there an observer of time? And you'll know this from your own experience because when you're in it, all time will disappear. Also, another thing is uh, one favorite, so I'll just quickly wrap up, on uh, location. Now, th this is another key thing. And there are other things, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave on this. Is there a sense of being located in this room? Like, is one in this corner or that corner or, or loca has, a, has a spatial location? And if so, what is observing location? What witnesses location? So see, like, location is an object. What about the, what about the witnesser of location? Is the witnesser of location, does, is, and be in the experience of that which witnesses location, the attached witness, and see if location exists in that. See if time exists, or, or location, or body, or thoughts. If anything exists there that is limited or passing, then what's observing that? Yeah, and that's the process of self-inquiry.